This is official. I'm doing it now. Here we go. Check one. Check two. Oh, yeah. This is it. Welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour. Yes. I'm your host, Rob Cantrell. I got a great guest, uh, a comedian. He's been on Colbert. He's been touring around the world. He kills it here in New York. He's a good friend. Give it up for Osama Siddiqui, everybody. What's up? How, how, what's up? But, da, da. That was great. That was amazing. Oh, thank you. Do people not... Uh, you, you said before the show, you were like, you can... When this ends, this uh, intro, you can make fun of me for the intro, but how can I make fun of genius? You know, that was incredible. Oh. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't make fun of genius. Oh, it sounds you're too good. That's not funny to me. It's not funny. Genius is not funny to me. <laughs> it's not. You're being too nice. You're being too nice. Well, I am a corny old white dude pumping up an old rolling machine <laughs> and uh, rocking see, out some echoes effects. The big blackout in the eighties. Check, 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 check. check. There's yeah, one white guy going into the AV stores. <laughs> yeah, I was the one white dude during the black, during the black hour. hour. Uh, there is a there is a movie in a New York movie uh, which is called Beat Street, uh. and it's the original dope a breakdance movie. And there's a character Lee in it, and he could just he could scratch, mm. he could do the windmill. Dude. He dressed cool, he was smooth, nonviolent. He was in breakdance, and mm. I always wanted to be that dude. That was the level of, of coolness course. that I had. I love how thought. one of the things is nonviolent. Like <laughs> every check, dancer check, was check, also check. violent, but this guy was not a violent dancer. <laughs> yeah, not a violent dancer at all. <laughs> it was B Street. He didn't carry a gun. He didn't need to. Yeah, exactly. He did a dope exactly. ass windmill. <laughs> I don't beat. I yeah. just beat. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. I, I think I've seen B Street. I, I had a little phase when I was you know getting into like the history of hip hop. Watching all the documentaries, you know, all those like house parties in the Bronx, yes. New York and all those guys. And I was I was getting into it. And I guess you kinda of came up in the same time period, right? Yeah, I was born in nineteen seventy two. Boom. So you were eight, nine when hip hop was coming in, right? Yeah, I was break dancing, oh. coming from DC, right. White kid in a public school, listening oh, yeah. to go go, listening to early uh, hip hop, but then we moved down to this little southern town. But my first concert, what I always have yeah. My first concert was in Roanoke, Virginia. Amazing. And it was called the Fresh Festival. And it was the first hip hop arena right. show ever. And the lineup was Grandmaster Flash, oh, yeah. Houdini, Boom. doing the Freaks Come Out at Night, Run DMC on their second album. Amazing. I'm 12, they're yeah. 19. Crazy. And then the headliners were the Fat Boys. Incredible. Three 300 pound dudes just came of on course. the stage and rapped about pizzas <laughs> and hamburgers. There were just three cranes bringing them down <laughs> yeah. slowly. The fat boys. The fat. That's the day the fat And boys now they're. Yeah. The fat men. <laughs> the, the, the fat men. The, the large, fresh fellows. Hell yeah, man. But they were cool. But yeah, I, I do love beats. I do love hip hop. I do love music. I love rock. I love everything. I love same, all same kinds of music. I, 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 you know, I consider you a good friend. I've never really hung out with you, Rob, but I've already, I've always loved th th what you talk about, your style. I've always assumed that you were like a hip hop head music guy, just from your hair alone. You know? <laughs> your hair just screams Rick Rubin's protege or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it it the, goes for the beats. It's you know, frazzled you know, by you know, listening you to go a lot. DJ of Rob, he's the best. He's crazy. <laughs> he doesn't talk in normal sentences, but he's crazy. He's amazing. Yeah. But yeah, I'm a big music guy myself. I grew up playing violin for like 10 years. I was a music theory minor. I wrote music for a little bit. Oh, dope. Uh, I played the violin. I was, uh, yeah. but that's what kind of made me against music because I was forced to do the violin. But it was Suzuki method, sure. late 70s, oh, early 80s, hardcore, holding, you know, I, I knew how to properly hold of it. Of course. Get here. that callus right in oh, that. that little collarbone vibe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The violin's about pain, Dude. isn't it? Dude, even the holding, just first position on the bow. Yes. You have to have Hawking's disease or whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> you have to be Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking could have been an amazing physicist or a phenomenal violinist, by the way. Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. It <laughs> comes with carpal tunnel. It was the origin. <laughs> holding the violin was the origin of carpal tunnel. Because it's so awkward. Because you have to do it hard. Yes. And you have yes. to do uh, <laughs> it, it, but it's soft and hard, but it is the hardest. I'm glad now that I learned it. It's phenomenal. Because I'm fucking with music now, and now, like, I'm not as intimidated. 
Sure. Because I, well, violin's so hard. You wrote it. Sure. You were next level. I mean, you know, I was made for a thesis. I was, you know, it was for wow. writing for a thesis. I cannot do that anymore by any means. But uh, I w- violin is beautiful, but it has limitations. You can't really go heavy on the chords because it's very like, you know, it's the stringed instrument so that you're not like strumming. So yeah. I've always thought that it was a little like, you know, the G and the E can't really interact with each other because of the, le- the strings being far away and using the bows. So, you know, I'm a guitar guy. If I had a choice again, I'd go guitar. 100%. Yes. 100%. Are you playing guitar? I'm playing guitar now, and I'm, I'm bad. I've been bad really? for like 20 years. I, I knew from the hair. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> you teach every Sunday. Yeah, I'll teach every Sunday. I'll give you the G chord. I'll, you know, we'll yeah. do a little smoke on the water. <laughs> I'll get you out the door. coming in because they got a crush on you. Yes. Like, Rob, that was an amazing lesson. Yes, thank you, thank uh, you. I knitted you this <laughs> guitar strap. Hey, yeah. Absolutely, asshole. Anytime. Yeah. See you next week. Yeah. I'm, I'm not playing guitar. I'm playing uh, tabla. I don't know if you know oh, that. Wow. Is. Tell but, me about so that. I, was, I played tabla growing up, uh, Indian drums. I lost it. <sighs> My best boy bought it for me this this birthday, and I've been playing 30 minutes every day and getting back into it. And I, I think I'm better now than I was when I was playing it. Because it's a little bit of pra- But back then, I would do like these large practice sessions before my class, and I, I didn't do shit. Now I'm doing 30 minutes every day. I'm starting to see genuine increase in skill, and I'm loving it, dude. I'm, every day after skip spots, I go home. Little tabla. Yeah, rock some beats. Rock right? some beats. I'm a big rock, it's all about the beats. Oh, it's, the, it's the beginning of humankind with the beats, bro. Yeah, it's all the heartbeat. On, it's all going back to home, the drum. The beginning. The beginning. If, I, if I'm at a concert, I'm watching drums. I'm watching the drum guy play. I don't go to a jazz concert unless I can see the drummer drum. I got to see the drummer, man. I the drummer's got to get something. No, the drummer rocks the party. The drummer yeah. is the energy. He is the core. He is everything. He's the, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, the yeah. whole thing. It's, it, yeah, it the, comes the, from the, the, the foundation. Can you build a house without the scaffolding? Yes. Huh? You, no. You, you want, cannot. You, you want a mud hut? Yeah, you want a mud It's not yeah. Tell the drummer to go home. You want a mud <laughs> hut. <laughs> you need a big bass. <laughs> A big a thick with two C's, bass. Bass, just lined up in the basement. Oh, can I say this, though? Maybe yeah. you, can, you can change my mind on this. I'm a big jazz guy. I love going to jazz shows, right? Yeah. Uh, after shows, I'll go to small sometimes and just hang out there, write a little bit. Totally. But I maybe I'm like a dumb, uncultured idiot. Love a drum solo. Love a key solo. Love a, you know, a trumpet solo. Love a sax solo. Mm-hmm. Why do I not like bass solos? Why are bass solos so annoying to me in my ear? Oh, this I can appreciate. It. No one's ever going like, "Woo!" Bass solo. I hate that, but I'm also that's of that ilk. Why can't I appreciate it? I don't know, man. Are you are you someone who loves a good bass? Solo? I love the bass. I'm all about. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm like that girl, all about the bass. <laughs> I'm all about the bass. That's the boom. <laughs> That's the lava. That's the under. That's what gets the party going. Three famous bass lines, my favorite. Okay, first of all, Radiohead National, uh, what is it? And, uh, Radiohead National, uh, it's called uh, National What? In the bass verse. I love a bass line. Dude. I love a bass line. And then my other favorite. I know, I know, I know, I know. You're saying solo. But yes. I'm just, well, I'm, I know you're being technical. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. A bass solo. But the other two O's. But the O's. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Dude, that thing is really flex. I feel like basses don't get that much time ever to flex. I know. It's and I hate with that. electric. I think to flex. On a face, you gotta have to stand up, yeah. bad boy. You gotta have to stop. Gotta have to stand up. This is Matt Garrison. We're at Shapeshifter Lab. Matt yeah. Garrison, who, who's the nonprofit, he's like a famous oh, jazz man. bassist, so we don't want to trash him. No, 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 no trash. No trash. No trash. No trash. I'm just saying, when I see the double bass play on the jazz solos, I can't get into it too much. I got you. You're high level. No, you're. <laughs> I, I totally get what you're saying. <laughs> Just sure, I throw it in some heat for the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to get, get lost. Get the comments, you know. Yeah, I want to get, you know. But anyway, I'm saying my preferences. I, I, you know, I, the, the, you know, the drum really just gets me. For some reason, the bass doesn't hit me as much. But that's, that, that's my, my heart talking. Where's, where are you at with the saxophone? I yeah. go in and out, but I'm kind of going through a sax phase. Really? I, I, I'll take sax over trumpet any day. Yeah. I think trumpet is an uglier instrument, unless Miles Davis is playing it. And he's the one who figured out how to make it smooth, but sometimes I hear the trumpet, I'm like, it's too rough. 
Sax is always smooth to me. Always. Yes, always smooth. Yeah. yeah, you can finesse a sax, but <laughs> man, how badass is to have a horn section? Oh, dude, dude, a good horn section? A good horn with the stab? Okay, just a stab. Listen, horn. You hit him with the fucking like with the what's up? Well, the one two, right? Yeah, with the one two. Oh, you, you hit him with the trumpet and the and the trombone together. Oh. Not a sound sounds more powerful. It sounds like a man coming. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a man oh. going into the cave. You're like, wife. I bet wife. That's how powerful it is. No other sound can come close to that level of power. Power. I love it. It's power. No, the, the horn section in, in in our modern society, we're not exposed to it. Well, but the first time I took mushrooms, I went to a Maceo <laughs> Parker concert, sure. and he was the horn section for James Brown. This yeah. was some of the funkiest of uh, funk yet. And it was like a packed dance floor. Ooh. People were going off, and I walked in, and it was just all these horns Ooh. hitting my face. And it was just energy and bright. It was so bright. It was so lively. Yeah, those old school funk bands, you know? Marvel yeah. Man, when he did James Brown's people, they they were better than a drum machine in terms of the replicatability, just the way they were making their sound. Yeah. They could make the same sound, same energy, same flavor, same vibe, same pitch for in perpetuity. Yes. How do you train your muscles to be that powerful and that good and that consistent? That that always the fuck. How fucking Yeah, the funk. You know? There's one dude that half of hip hop is built on right. is the funky drummer. Boom. And it's it, it's just because he had some weird personality. Who would have thought when you were making hip hop that the two biggest sample people would be James Brown and Steely Dan? <laughs> no, not one connection. No. <laughs> White dad rock and black <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. spot soul. I mean it's like what a interesting thing. It's, it's like that 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 between the, li the lyrics, that, that break. Look, you know what's the funkiest? The funkiest sample in hip hop. What was that? The Indian joint. <laughs> Timberland? Timberland will kill it. Any of those Jays, give me Timberland. a hip hop beat in an Ind or a Middle Eastern influence tabula type of beat, and it's done. It's over. You it's the best. Who know Timberland just went to India and just starts. You can't even. He's just like, oh. oh. He's just here with money. Just money. He's just here with money everywhere. Because <laughs> it's a. Uh, yeah, tell me about the rhythm of, of the tabla. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, your culture and where the musical culture. Let's get sure. Nobody's sure. talking about this. Shit. Come on, man. I, I grew up playing uh, harmonium and singing. Yes. Not well. My mom was just a very. High, my parents are very highly cultural. They love Bengali music. I grew up. They go Bangladesh, the Bengali. Yes. So that culture of music is deep. I mean, Hindu classical, you know, Carnatic music, yes. in, uh, Hindustani classical music. These are, these are hundreds of years old in traditions, right? So, I love Hinduism. So yeah. Hinduism is the shit. It's the shit. I uh, get holy. it. Ooh, kick it. But Oprah gets <laughs> Hinduism. I get the symbolism. I want to kick it with the elephant. 100%. I got the blue lady. Let's oh, kick yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> love the arms. Love the arms. Grab her with all of them. Yeah. I'm into it. Some of the sickest graphic design <laughs> of all time. Some of the illest beats that ever been. <laughs> Best album covers. Best Hinduism. What's up, I see? All day. Uh, you saw my parents uh, put me in it. I, every Sunday I was going to learn music. Uh, I wasn't that good at harmony, but I really got good at kind of like I, I was better at it. I just kind of had a natural flavor to it. So I started listening to Zachary Hossein. I started listening to the greats. And I started seeing some East West mix. Yeah. Zachary Hossein, who's amazing, the most famous out there right now, his dad, Al Araka, played with Buddy Rich on an album. Oh, shit. That's like, oh no, nobody knows this. And they're just like rocking it, him on the drums. And I was on the tabla, and I was like, where all these East West mixes that were kind of happening in the 60s, 70s really kind of happened and it stopped. And I'm like, how do we bring it back? How do we bring that fucking energy back? Of like East West coming in and just, you know, being not just outside the mainstream, but being like that mainstream. Yes, music goes beyond cultures and politics. Yeah. Because musicians, it's like comics. Like, right. even if I don't know you and I've heard one joke, right. I can pretty much sum. If I like you or not. Sure. You know sure, what I'm saying? Sure. And so I think it's with musicians, like a Buddy Rich, like when you get to that level, it is a touch and a feel. Yeah. With all art, I think with comedy, we can go deep with comedy, but comedy's boring. Mm. But I do think, like, guitar players, what I've learned with musicians, it's, it's feel. Dude. I mean, Buddy Rich is one video where he 
looks like he's so dead. Yeah, he looks like he's being breakfast tiffany up. But his arms... He's doing 200 beats per minute. Brother, he's doing double time on a... Double time. And his body is, is shitting itself. He literally is like, <laughs> he can't even move. But his, but his body, bro, he can't stop the beat. Uh, the beat is the beginning. The heartbeat of the womb. Yeah. For real, you are here. The first thing you hear is the heartbeat of your own mother, bro. Of her pulse. Blood pulsating into your fucking... Uh, around your embryo, bro. Just... <laughs> That's the beginning. That's the beginning. Is rhythm. And as you die... Same thing, that fucking slow pulsating exit. We are drum, we are the beat. Everything. We are the ocean. We are, like, you know, when I meditate and I listen to my heart, and it is the beat, but it is like, there's a whooshness to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's very Webster. Yeah. Whooshness. There's a whooshness to it. When it gets quiet, it goes. <laughs> and I can feel, I, you know, that's that beat. It's, it's that pulse. drum underneath the ocean that's just, there's something going on. Oh, brother, I, I, I can't stress it enough, man. It's, it, and when you start playing it, you start tapping into that concept. Yes. And I, it's truly, because all Indian music or like the Indian classical, it's related to religion. It's very like spiritual. There's, there's so many practices around devotion with the music. You know, what do you play in the morning when you're praying puja? What do you, what do you play in the, in the daytime? What do you play at night? There's rags and scales that are made for different time periods. It's very intertwined in spirituality, man. Yes, it is. With those, uh, you know, you ever get down with those Hertz videos or the Hertz yeah. sounds? It's like, uh, there's a certain yeah. level tone yeah. that re-vibrates your whole... Oh, oh, like your like, essence. Like, sure, so I sure. think it's like yeah. seven thirty. Do you know those? The, the, it's it, like all the sound files that I know, like all the super sound dudes. It's like seven forty hertz. Like there's a certain level that yeah. vibrates everything. So all music is uh -huh. tone, and it's like all connected to our molecular soul. Sure, sure. Why not? Yeah. I mean, if we react differently to different voices, like hey, 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 that is four different things. Why wouldn't music have the same ability? Bro? Yeah. We're, we're, if it's all sound, we're permeous, right? We're fucking permeable beings. We're taking in everything, dude. We're taking in everything, and uh, and we're nothing at the same time. Like, oh, it's like we're nothing at the same time. So that's the tricky part, like, of letting go but enjoying it all, you know. And I think with music, like, just recently, I saw this band Soul Coffee. I haven't been to like, you know, sure. we stand up. We same just don't. Here, same here. Do you? But I know you're a music head and heart. Have you snuck? Love... That was my question. Have you snuck out to any of like, course. shows? So not, not, you know what I'm doing now? I'm like, you know what? I'm a, I was like, I, to, I was a big concert head in Dallas when I grew up. Trees, shout out, one of the yeah. best venues ever. Oh wow! And I was going to concert all the time. When I started standing, immediately you, you lose all your other passions. Everything, yeah. friends, family, friends, family, family. Uh, health, health you know, uh, sexuality, sexuality, yeah, spirituality, <laughs> yeah, everything gets stripped down to I need to get up and I need to get these motherfuckers laughing or it, I don't do it. It's beautiful in a way that it kind of pairs your life down to something kind of singular. That's not a negative thing. The fact that you make it beautiful, it can be beautiful, but you lose all the other passions. So this last couple of months, I'm like, you know what? I'm always in Venice Village doing my last shows, right? Fuck right, it. right. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck you it. You know, fuck it. Smalls, fuck it. Oh, uh, yeah. You know? So I went to Sid Sriram recently, nice. who is an uh, Indian singer, kind of fusion guy, jazz infused in the and classical. Little sitar in the mix. Little sitar in the mix. I like it. Wow, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And he's an amazing singer, bro. I just went to a fucking concert. I was listening to this guy. Kind of I'm sorry. I don't know. Hit it. Uh, I just wanted to make sure. Maybe it was recording. I hope it was. Oh, shit. <laughs> I think it was. I don't know. I turned it down. I wasn't sure how loud it was. Only, only a Rob Cantrell podcast halfway through recorded? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's just the sound checks. <laughs> we could hear. We could hear. Matt's got it. Matt's got it. I'm <laughs> I'm rolling, I'm rolling. Yeah, we're rolling, we're rolling. Hilarious. Yeah, 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 yeah. But where were we on that before I... Uh, I always wig out about the sound I because we're having such a good podcast. Exactly. Yeah. I got you. What we're talking about? We're talking about Tatar. Oh, yeah, so I wanted to see Sid Sriram. He's an amazing singer, musician, uh, knows Carnatic, South Indian, knows the, uh, you know, in, uh, Indian classical, knows jazz. Because a lot of the same concepts there, right? Yes. The, uh, the, the, what's the note between the notes? The blue note, right? Yes. Uh, Carnatic deals with that very deeply. And so that idea of like, ah, with the note within the, ah, he ha he, I mean, he's, he's a master. 
So I was sitting down. I was like, fuck yeah, man. I did all. I did a comedy. I didn't sacrifice any of my passion, my dream. And then I added to it. I just added to the cup, dude. Uh, it felt so good. Yes, that's uh, going to see a show after doing stand-up Come comedy. On, man. It's the best. Uh, when I was in San Francisco, like uh, the punchline was connected to the Fillmore. Mm. So you could get into the Fillmore free if Bro. you were working a thing. And I remember one night I got to see this band, uh, Supergrass. Yes. Uh, at the Fillmore for free, and I was just eating fries, and I did a bunch <laughs> of sets. And then I ended up at the concert, Why and I was watching. A part of the story at all. Oh, I love the fries. <laughs> I love being safe at a concert. What am I think? Yeah. Then I had some fries. Then I had some fries. <laughs> there was some onion rings. If it's onion rings, fries it's another it's level. It's an event for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a fried potato is the best. It makes, it elevates everything, my man. It <laughs> elevates it all. Uh, <laughs> I, and I remember, yeah, I think I had a little <laughs> sandwich. I remember I was just in the balcony, and it was just like uh, luxurious in some sense. But low key, I love low key lu luxury. Of you course, know? of course. Like a VIP hookup, and you're just like hiding out. You know, no, uh, eating a sandwich. Yes, <laughs> and fries. And fries. Which is, again, low key luxury is French fries, apparently. Yes. It's French. Yes. It's French. It's, French. it's fancy. France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. France, France, France. France, France. France. <laughs> Uh, yeah, bro, 100%. The understated, the doing without doing. I, in comedy, too, bro. Like, when someone is without being or trying to be, that's what I love. You know, you just are. You're not being like, I'm this guy. This is my voice. You just are the voice. And I, same thing with uh, architecture, interior decorating, fucking music. Just do the thing as opposed to look at me do the thing, right? Yes. Uh, so I, I've, I've been trying to do more music, man. I've been trying to fucking get in there. What are, what are you watching? What are you getting into? Uh, yeah, I try. I use the guitar to get away from the uh, computer because uh -huh. it's tactile. Yeah. So I've been playing that, and then I've also um, – I just joined the Y, and they have a speed bag. Yeah. And I've been – Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah. Getting the rhythm – the speed bag is so much fun. I'm not a violent person. Yeah. I don't dig fights, but I like rhythm and I like the timing. And as I gotten older, it helps reflexes with your eye and sure, stuff. Dude. So I've been doing that. So I've been really getting into like health yeah. lately, like trying to work sure. out. Uh, instead of pull ups, I'm doing just hanging on the bar, sure. stretching is out that, my spine. Oh, okay. Oh, but you can do pull-ups too, right? It's not like I can, but it, right. it supposedly like throws your shoulder out. Huh. Like I'm going more for like I don't want to be ripped. I just want to be right. Uh, you want to be a stringy. Yes, yeah, 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 stringy. stringy. And just be a hot, like a sexy string. Yeah, yeah, sexy. <laughs> I do have a long torso. You got a long torso. I, I'm, I'm we, a long we, guy. I'm a long, long dude. dude. You know what I'm talking about. You should. You ever just hang on the bar? Dude, I, I, I be bar hanging. I be stretching. You know, I got these weird. My arms are randomly huge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, dude? I'll, I'll look down. There'll be like orangutans hugging me, thinking <laughs> I'm the mom. I'm, I got orangutan vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm sorry. I did Muay Thai now a little bit. So oh, nice. That's, again, I'm not a violent guy. I don't like fighting. But the rhythm of the bag, or yes. the, sorry, of the pads, bah, 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 you know? So I ended just the feeling of releasing a lot of that energy that I have. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just have a lot of energy. So I, I feel like doing a boxing or something like that is one of the big, biggest, like, cardio blasts you could possibly do. So. I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a lot of energy. Anything to not smoke crack. <laughs> your hair is doing an act out. You know yeah, saying? my hair is just like getting so much out. <laughs> Anything to not do crack. Uh, it wants to. Rob is the most crackhead, not crackhead. Yes, I've ever met in my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have, I have, uh, I have a place in my heart for all crackheads. You know what I'm saying? Are you drinking coffee or is it tr coffee drinking Rob right now? Yeah, you know coffee's what drinking Rob. Uh, <laughs> is Rob drinking Rob right now? Yeah. Uh, but no, 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 I do love, I do love weed and I do love coffee yeah. and I do love uh, water and I love stretching and I love being outside. Well, I, I feel like you've always, you're just a, you, you know, again, I don't want to bring in the same pun, but I feel like you march to the beat of your own drum. <laughs> yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, if we could bring it up. This also has a crazy bass, my man. Again, I want to say that I love bass. I don't want I, I, I don't want any like bass heads to be like. Yeah, you don't want to be. <laughs> the bass community attacks me. I no. love bass. Yes. I'm just saying I don't love a double bass solo in jazz. Sometimes like someone proved me wrong. Someone show me a a sonorous double bass solo, and I'll fucking quiet the fuck up. Okay. Anyway, listen, I'm a, I'm a Mingus fan. I like Mingus. I think I'll I'll, I'll do 
some Minga solos on the YouTube sometimes if I'm writing. So yeah, I but besides him, I haven't really found a sonorous double bass or a standard in a jazz quartet. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I felt I felt bad about. This. No, no, no. I I love your takes on everything because your stand up. Now you're in the zone right now. And uh, how long have you been doing stand up comedy now? Thirteen years. Now. You're you crossed Fuck. the ten mark. Fuck which, man. I still feel like I'm still learning every day beyond. I feel like I'm dumber now in stand-up than I was when I first started, because now I really truly know how much there is to learn. There's so much to learn. Right. It, it is the ultimate, you know, it's the depth. It's the depth. It's, and and you're, you're, you've been doing it for a while, longer than I have, I feel like. Yeah, it's in, since 99. Woo! I've been to the top, I've been to the bottom, I've been to the sides, I've fallen off, I've been up, I've been down, and I still, no, and I'm the same way. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Dude, I... I, I don't, I, and I, and I read my voice, yeah. everything, everything, I'm like, but... The older I get, it's like that with everything. Absolutely. Everything feels brand new, Absolutely. which is a good feel. It was where you kind of want to be. I, I think if you actually start learning the more about life, the more you have to release the knowing about life, I think. Yeah. And you have to really consciously understand that. And it's a really small thing. It feels hard because we've been shuffled into ego yeah. world, right? Like the whole world is like, get this, acquire this. This. So be like this. You, right. It's always know this so you can know this so you can get this. As opposed to the feeling of not knowing is not valued in Western culture. It's not even a part of the lexicon. Not know? Well, then know. Know it. Yeah, know it. <laughs> Dominate it. Go know. Control. Then fuck it. Know yeah. it, then fuck it. Yeah, know it. <laughs> then fuck it. Then fuck. get it out of there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then unknow it. Yeah. Then fuck Un it. And then know it. Uh, but you know the idea of the grace of not knowing. The, the, it, that's the true knowledge, I think, at this point is like, as I get older, to be have the joy in the not knowing and to try to walk into the path of knowing and knowing that at the end of it will be more not knowing and having <laughs> legit joy in that. It's tough. It's, it's a lot of undoing of, of codification, I think, of the Western mindset. And I'm still on the journey. I'm still on the journey. The, one, yeah. the, the thing about spirituality, and I try not to, I, but during the pandemic, I started meditating. I'm oh, up yeah. to doing like 20 minutes every morning. Hardcore, like nothing. Just White raw girls did dog. that when they baked their own bread. It was the same thing. Yeah, the same, same thing. thing. We're all on the journey here. We're all on the journey. <laughs> but the more you talk about it, the less it is. So ah, the yeah. more spiritual, the more I'm like, I know what everything and good is good and bad is bad yes. and that guy, oh, I'm going to oh, judge yeah. him. The more, yeah. you, the, the more you talk about it, it's the same thing with comedy. Hundo. The more you talk about comedy, the less, the funny, less funny, it funny it is. And the more you talk about spirituality, the uh, less funny it is. The <laughs> funny it is. <laughs> Yeah, bro. I, 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 I agree. I think, again, it's the thing of like, look at me, I'm doing this as opposed to just doing this, right? Yes. I'll find my POV tomorrow. What, what's my, am I gay redneck or something, you know? Yes. You're adding labels to yourself that are outward as opposed to just living inward and letting it go. Just going, you know? I, I don't know what this concept of get this by this time and or else you're not doing the thing. All this is ruining, is poisoning your brain. Just be and that is. It's so simple, right? It's just, but it's so hard to get there. I know. Ah, oh, God. And capitalism and making money is a little tricky. And uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And then also shit and have toilet paper. So that's part of it too, I guess. It's part of it too. <laughs> like there is a blending. Like there is a sense of uh, yeah. You, all you do need all you. Uh, the older I get, it's like you just want to be. Uh, yes. And that and when you're being, it, everything's cool. It's kind of like that heroin thing. Like, I think that's what these heroin dudes get to. And that's where I am trying to get to. That's but without they, the heroin. That's what they look like they're doing Tai Chi. Because the they're tai actually, you know, just they're actually finding their center. They're finding their center. They're that's letting it. everything flow by. <laughs> letting us go to work. Yes. And they're feeling being. Listen, who doesn't have a bills? <laughs> yeah. heroin addicts. Yeah, they're out of the fucking society sector. I, I, I really think about this a lot. I think it's like. Um, you know, we're in a world of ego. I mean, our, our job yeah. is literally the, the personification of ego. Me, <sighs> dialed up for validation, right? What is more egotistical than that concept? But it is possible to have an egoless journey, I think, with this. Yes. Stand-up is not just you on stage trying to get validation. Stand-up is also connection with people you never met, which is, now, which is one of the most beautiful things on earth. It is. So I really think stand-up has the most evil and most pure parts of life in just the baked into the fucking, you know, concept of it. Yes. And giving out and making people laugh, there's nothing cooler. Dude, I mean. I mean, rock and music is great. 
but killing in front of an audience and making people li- like that, I mean, for, that. For music to have the same feel, every 10 seconds, someone would have to go like, oh, <laughs> oh, like some sort of involuntary primal. Oh, uh, yeah. Ah. Imagine you were not, ima- that's why it's hard to be a comedian, because imagine you were not considered a good musician unless every seven seconds, someone was going, ah. Oh. Oh! <laughs> this is not a requirement for any art. It's an emotional reaction. I know. But you mean, I have to That's induce... why it's the highest. I mean, stand up is the lowest because we're just kind of just, we want to curse and spit and be funny and fart. But it's also the highest that, you know, we're trying eating the fries. hardest thing. Yeah. <laughs> eating fries. Um, uh, Lots of French fries. That's so funny. <laughs> you, you say it so sincerely. It's so not a joke to you. The fries thing is so real. I know. It's the simple things, my man. Seltz, good seltzer, <laughs> good coffee, ginger. I'm chopping ginger. Oh, oh like oh, that cold ginger. Ooh, I want you to say this, it? but also have one dark thing. Listen, yeah. you know, life's about good ginger, good seltzer, yeah. fucking your ex. When, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know like, yeah, 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 yeah. A marriage day, and you know, and yeah, also yeah. fries. Fries, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like insect porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fries. Fries. Ah, who's, who's with me? <laughs> who's with me? Uh, uh, yeah, bro, I, I really, I, as I do this business, right, I see more and more stuff. Right? Yes. I see people that have gotten huge. Lost themselves. I've seen people yes. who haven't gotten huge, lost themselves. I feel people. I've, I feel people. I saw you know who left the business and have beautiful lives. So I, there's so much to it that I wasn't there when I was started. When I started, it was very much like do it and get good and become amazing, you become the best. And that concept is still there, become the best. But it's not based on anything else. It's become the best in the world because that's the journey, and I can get to new locations and adventures because of that journey. Yes. It's not a reach there. It's if I have this North Star, I'll go to places I never would have gone unless I had this North Star. Yeah. Does that make sense? To, uh, it, no, 100%. It, it's tricky, but it, it will. Stand up taught me about myself and to right. accept myself and to like completely like go towards the weirdness and go. But there is, it, that's the thing is uh, the ego. You're weird? <laughs> Am I, I? No, everyone does bits about frogs as an opener, bro. Yeah, I got a whole bit. Everyone does that, dude. <laughs> I could talk about frogs forever, my bro, man. I'm all, I'm, I, all I'm all in frogs, bro. Yeah. I'm all in there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's doing, but I haven't been going out as hardcore as much. Are you doing a ton? Of, it seems like you're everywhere these I, days. I can't stop, bro. I, I, yeah. I, I, this is my life. I, I just love doing it. I'm, I'm headlining more. I'm, I, I do at least two to three a day. Nice. Uh, one. I, I just got to do it. It's, it's my breathing a little bit. Uh, try to keep it healthy. But now, you know, before I wasn't eating, bro. I was just kind of like doing spots, you know, five to a one, mics and spots. And I wasn't eating. And I was just like a very unhealthy kid, man. Yes. Uh, not eating right. And now I'm just like, you know what? If I'm aging 33 now, I'm like, okay, if I really want to keep this life where I love doing stand up all the time and I love going out and I, uh, this is truly still the thing that is the core of my purpose and love and just how I, how I interact with the world, then I gotta have some ginger. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. gotta eat well, I gotta sleep well, uh, so I can keep this going. And it's very important now, because body, your body becomes, it has to become your passion, I think, as you get older, or else you're gonna fucking uh, atrophy. Yeah, 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 and the uh, older you get, yeah, men, just, yeah. Uh, but the rewards are so good. When you look good as an older man, dude. Yeah, whoa! I love my 50s. People love you, dude. Yeah. I love it. I love. I love hanging in. And I remember everybody doing coke in, in their twenties and shit. And I was like, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. I'm gonna just eat some ginger and do bong hits over here, and listen to some deep dub reggae. <laughs> boom boom. Uh, <laughs> yes. Let's see. Where the beats going? Oh, there we go. Oh. Yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, man. I like it. Yes. Sadiki. We are doing Usama. Freaky in the leaky. Leaky on the cheeky. Oh shit. Oh, it's getting freaky. I don't mind that. We'll just do it with a hi hat. Funk it out. Put yeah. some reverb. <laughs> what you say? You like Beats Word? Uh. We do this all day long. Uh. It's nothing to sing a song. Oh. 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 Ooh. La, la. Cobb. 
just Ooh. doing our job. Hey. 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 I should have said, doing our work. <laughs> <laughs> To go on to music and hip hop, like, and I'm not that, but even messing with the and the like, the Travis Scott. Are you up with these dudes? Like the new hip hop? Like it just so seems like it's all like, like, like I listen to it and it's just like, like it's really this out is there. You're old is that you think Travis Scott is new? Yeah, I think Travis Scott. But, <laughs> but Travis Scott is like the the twist for us right now. Yeah, he's like you too. Like, Who's like Buddy Holly and Travis Scott in the same place, buddy? No, no, he's uh. The Travis Scotts. But I mean the... Uh, the new school rap. The, the, the sound. Uh, sound. Because okay, so I remember when Gucci Man came in, I was like, okay, I understand mm. trap. I'm understanding this. I even got into England, uh, all that Dizzy Rascal shit. I'm a huge like, grime guy. I love Grime that. shit. Like, I understand that. Chips and fries. Chips and fries. Chips and chips. Yeah. Hanging out. I have a joke. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have a joke I'm working on. Is that I don't. I don't love British rap because of socialism. You know, I can't trust the problems <laughs> if you have free healthcare. You know, what I'm saying? that's true. And that's Germans have British people have no guns, so they're even their gunshots and grime sounds sound bad. Yeah. They're like, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you don't have. A, there's, no, there's so much gun control for this to, to sound. Good. Yes. <laughs> that's the only thing. When that's the only time I cannot take English hip hop <laughs> that serious because it's just not that hard. It can't be hard. It can't be, you got fish and game. chips. Come yeah. On, come bro. on. Then you didn't get beat up like I got beat up. <laughs> uh, America, we might, might not be best, but we could do some hip hop. If you want to do some you hardcore, come on. Yeah, protect your fucking neck. What's up? Shit gets real out here. Wu Tang forever. Protect your neck in Europe because they got your neck. Yeah, the government got, got your neck. Got your neck. You can't protect your neck. No, let's ban rap from socialist countries. Can yes. you just do that? I, I can't believe you, dude. It's <laughs> yeah. too good. Your life is too good. Stop. Stop. Uh, yeah, stop. <laughs> Is there a Bengali hip hop artist? Who's the number one? Do you know? Are you that well? Do you know well, that there, deep? There is Bengali because every hip-hop. country has an Eminem. Right. Em, that's what I always trip right, out about. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here's and I step. bet they could spit, dude. Bengali hip hop is kind of coming up, but really, where the interesting thing is is uh, Indian hip hop. Yes. So in Mumbai, they got this thing called gully rap. Nice. Uh, and gully raps, you know Bollywood, right? The whole yeah. kind of like spectacle of Bollywood. These yeah. guys are kind of against that concept of like the dances and all the, you know, all that stuff. These are kind of like poor kids from poor slums, kind of like the same way New York started. And the best uh, art always comes from. Of course, and of course, it would naturally have the analogous flavor of New York rap because what's shittier than a fucking Mumbai slum, right? Yeah. So this thing called gully rap, and I'll, I'll send you some tracks. Divine's Please. a guy who does stuff. Uh, Divine's the main guy. The same thing with Divine. He worked with Nas, and he there's this movie called Gully Boy that was huge in India a couple of years ago. All the rappers. I remember. I have heard the of that. Soundtrack yeah. for that. So the music is great, bro. You'll listen to, like the the guys and like, oh, this is fucking sick. Like they have their own style. The music is good, and like the beats are like you can feel the syllabic and multisyllabic nature of the fucking rap. You know, as you do when you're listening. It's it's, it's good, and it flows. Yeah, Hindi works well with rap. It's like the the language is very strong and very powerful and very like lot of uh, beautiful m- like melody to it. So it really works with rap. I, I, I highly recommend people check out Gully Rap. Just, d- just Google Gully Rap uh, in, uh, on YouTube. You'll find Google it, it up. Yeah, smoke a joint, listen to it. It's got some funky beats. You'll get out there. 100%. I'm a, I'm a big fan of like shit that comes up naturally, you know? Just yes. Like, 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 like there's, there's a comedy thing. Like uh, in India, right, when you first, the comedy first started, right, stand-up comedy. Yes. It was uh, kind of passe or gauche to not do it in uh, English. Like, if you weren't doing English comedy, they were seeing as as low, right? Oh, yeah. No, wait, yes, yes, Expats. Stand, expats. Stand yeah. up in English forms, we're going to do a comedy in English. Then, naturally, but here's the thing, the funny Indian guys in India aren't thinking in English, so naturally, this counter scene started of people doing Hindi comedy in their natural language. That is blown up, and these fucking amazing Hindi comics, where they kill in their own language, are now going off. They're, they're getting millions of views on YouTube and stuff like that. I love that sort of grassroots real shit of like, no, I'm going to just do what I do and that people are going to come because it's fucking it's my shit. It's because it's shit, yeah. Because with all art forms, and this is with violin as well, and in jazz, there becomes this point where it gets too intellectualized. Oh, yeah. And then you start looking down on, you know, people rag on hip hop and I rag on trap and, you know, all this yeah. stuff. But at the same time, the young, it's young people's game and the sounds 
are going to be created within Bro, what their reality is. Pe people are like, yo, Charlie Parker, man, no one better. And fine, okay, yeah. he's the best ever, right? He would get a head in a taxi cab, Miles Davis saw great, okay. Yeah. But who do I love? I love Gillespie. Because Gillespie was a people person. Yes. He, he was amazing what he did. He could, he could do bebop all day. But he was like, what kind of music do my people like? What do I like to do? What, what can I, how can I connect with people? So he made really good big band music. He made really good jazz. He was just the man. I thought that, that's the kind of comedy I want to do. Like, yeah, it's me, but I also want to give you all some stuff that I like. Like, let's all connect in the, in the middle. No, I see your act. No, you've been on Colbert. But then what I also thought, like, your Indian background and your heritage and your family and your bon Bengali yeah. history, you're, you're honest. You're completely honest about it. And you're making it funny Thank and you, cool Thank you. Thank you. and making it cool. And my favorite uh, comic when I first started and still is to this day is a Sikh. Uh, Arge Barker. I don't know. Oh, if, I know Arge Barker. The funny people don't get people well, sleep on dude, Arge Barker. He's an Indian guy. Cause I knew all the I'm Bengali. Yeah, that's what I thought. I all knew, Indian dudes know. And you know it. So when he's I was real. Out, like dude. Arge is like up there with a dude, tell Arge, in terms of. Nobody yeah. knows Arge. Nobody. He's but so I, fucking as a funny. Brown guy growing up, I was like, Arge is Indian. This guy fucking rocks. Arch Barker, I don't know what the Barker's for, but damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he, what's happening here? He's doing touring and shit? Yeah, right? he's in Australia. He's a huge star. Oh, he started yeah, touring yeah. over there, Dude. and he was big, and then he got Flight of the Concords, and he lived over here, and we would freestyle. We would get together oh, dude, and I get high Arch. and freestyle oh, and hang out with Arch. Arch yeah, Arch is, uh, the, yeah, like, and the thing that was cool about Arch, and the same with your vibe, he was positive. Like mm. so many comics are just so oh, fucking sure. negative, sure. and I just can't, after a while, <laughs> it just like I'll just blank out yeah, on it. I'm bro. just black out on the, the negativity. They, they really are, and you know what? And I'll just go, uh, and I just can't deal. <laughs> but Arge was like, you know, kind of this weird Sikh dude yeah. that had this cool angle, yeah. was also funky, yeah. and I was like, oh yeah, this shit is great right now. The, the the realness people, you know, what I'm saying, who like, can people get. Uh, Cause you know you got this new Indian kind of crop of kids coming up right now yeah. that are very like white gazed up. You know they're very under the wing of American culture. So how can I give you stuff that y Americans would like as opposed to what's your shit? You know yeah yeah. What's give me your shit? stanky food, baby. Like, yeah yeah. Give me, yeah. give me the shit that's like that got a little stank to it. Give me the blue cheese version. You know yeah. If you go to North Carolina, you got to get the vinegar. You got the vinegar. You got to get the vinegar barbecue. You got to get no the, sweetness. Which no I don't sweetness. Like, by the way, I don't love it. But, yeah, I but love you got to try. And, and you're being real. You got to be real, and it's different, <laughs> and it's funky. It's mad funky, dude. I like things that are different. Absolutely. I get bored. How I got uh, and uh, the thing about a crowd, the best comedy crowd is a diverse crowd. Absolutely. If it's all one thing, it's 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 cool. Well, because you can swim in it. Right, I get right, it. Right. But at the same time, when it's on and there's a level of right. intellect. It's just a, it's it's a different vibe. Well, I think diversity when you're around it, your body becomes more smart just on a natural level. It's like yes, it understands that there's different types of people, so your body is almost like naturally like on a vibe level like raising. When you become too mobbed up, we all get dumber, right? Yeah, you become like an English soccer crowd. You know those videos, <laughs> yeah. of guys in tracksuits, <laughs> <laughs> throwing fire and shit. Because <laughs> 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 they lost the game, yeah, they burned down the pharmacy. Yeah. <laughs> they lost the game, so they're going to burn down the pharmacy, dude. Yeah. And I'm just like, you're right, when it's one type of demographic, our brain starts to be like, well, I can just turn off now, because I cannot think. Yeah. I just think there's a natural thing our brain does when we have, like, I see a Chinese guy, an Asian guy, uh, a Korean guy. You have to open your heart more. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You have to, when you're around different people, you have to be completely open-hearted because you're not used to their, what, they, what they're kicking, so you just have to be like, yo, man, everything's right. the same. Bro. You know, that, that's the gig. I mean, bro, it really is, bro. Like, it know, is, 100%. There's one, there's one reel that I love, IG reel. It's like this, like, all the cultures, moms are showing what sandal they hit their kids with. Yeah. And they're different, beautiful sandals, and there's different ornate embroidery. I'm like, huh. Different, but the same. Yeah, uh, I'm from the South, and I mean, my dad was from the South. My, yeah, my oh. grandfather was a work coal miner, a child God. working coal miner. Damn. Yeah, this is a town of 500. My dad hit me, like, they got the belt. <laughs> yes, sir, no, sir, <laughs> yeah. old. I'm your old dad, school American. Yeah, my, I'm my old school American. My was the one. My dad's a nice, like, scholar guy. Yeah. My mom was a fucking coal miner vibe, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said, you, you talk about it yeah. on your, you, you have a great Instagram and you go Thank live you. and you. you talk 
honestly about your upbringing and how hardcore Indian culture is or Bengali mm. culture is and just that old school of beating your kid, Come not on, beating brother. your kid. Come on, dude. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's good not to beat your kid. It's, I would never. I ask. went through it. I think that's it. It gives you this, uh, it gives you fight or flight. Yeah. I've always had fight or flight my I, whole life. I, a lot of people will be like, no, it's good. It's, I don't think beating your kid is good in any way possible. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, okay, fine. There's, there's positive things that happen, I guess. But that's like saying, like, you know, it's good that we killed the, this village, so it made room for a mall, and the mall's nice. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like, dude, like, you know, it's it's hurting somebody, especially one that childhood can't fight is back. so fragile I, that I it can go. just like once you start shaking up yeah. the fucking egg a little bit, it's uh, <laughs> it can go wrong. Yeah, yeah. What are you missing for uh, trauma? Yeah. My head got a little shook up. <laughs> I got a little uh, shook. Scrambled, not yeah. Yeah. Got you know? cracked, but we we hard boiled the side. It's looking good. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, Humanity. I never, I would never uh, touch in a negative way my kid. Yeah. Unless it was uh, mouth enough. Do you, you know? want kids in marriage or you're young, single? I was, yeah. I was either or. I'm like honest with people. Like, and I, if you ever want to talk to yeah. somebody, I was like 38 and, and yeah. got, I, I, you, you know, at the time, married? I wanted to be single. Yeah. You and never got married? Never got married? No, I'm married to have a kid. Right now you do. I do. Oh, I didn't. Even so yeah, it was like 38 is when I got married. Oh yeah, I know this. Okay, then yeah, you, yeah. you were late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying I went through my 30s and I, 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 I don't bum out on people not having kids. I guess right. I understand both sides. Sure. I, 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 I love seeing. I know how you yeah. did it. You were like eating fries and then you're like, yeah, I think I'll get married. <laughs> it was like out of nowhere, and then you just did it. It was a week, probably. No, no. Uh, I went out there and there was a lot of freaky chicks. And then I met <laughs> one good chick and I was like, yo, I gotta hold chicks this are freaky, down. Man. Chicks are freaky. Yeah, if chick dudes are freaky, chicks are no, freaky. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. And then everybody's freaky. But you know, if you do find one that you could chill with. Chill with, it's it's hard to find. What's what's your wife? I never met your wife. How, what's she up to? You, she's out there. She's style? yeah. She's very professional. Not a comedian. Okay. No comedy. I sure. met her in college. Beautiful oh. shout out to Anne. I don't talk about my family no. much on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, whatever, but whatever uh, she works for. at FIT and runs a small business. Yeah, amazing. FIT, yeah. So which means she's fashionable. Yeah, fashionable, classy, cool oh, yeah. chick, uh, artistic, business minded. Okay, dude. Uh, yeah, we got one kid. We're doing the thing. How's, how's the kid? Kids, cool great. Do you know? Do frog. He, he does bits about toads. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't try not to talk about my kid okay, too no, much no, on no, the no, cannabis no, no, coffee no, no, hour. No worries, no worries. No, but uh, yeah, but uh, I'm just saying that All you up. could do it either way. As yeah, life goes on, as a comedian, you could do it family or yeah. as an artist or not have it, and mm. it's cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm not pressured. I, I always, I always uh, look at the body. Uh, what's the body telling me? Yeah, like truly, not on some gratification shit, what's the deeper body telling me? So it's like the knees, right? We were up and we're like, fuck, lick, come, yeah, yeah. live, <laughs> give, warm, warm, soft, warm, warm, soft, piss, nice, is shit. Yeah. All that's there, right? Yeah. But what's the deeper sense telling me? And I, I, I have to sit down sometimes and be like, okay, really talk to the body and be like, do I want this? Is this, is this really what I want? Truly, is this what I want? In my core, of course, do I want this girl? Do I want her to be with her? Do I do think this is not good? Do I really want? Stand up. I did shrooms for the first time to know if I should move to New York to do stand up. I was like, I need to go deeper to the core because I'm going to leave med school. So let's fucking really be sure about this. So I did uh, shrooms with this ex of mine and we just kind of were on shrooms on a bed and I, I just all crystallized. Like if I don't go to comedy in New York, it will be the biggest, biggest folly of my entire life. And to this day, every passing day since that decision, I've been more and more congruent with my who I am inside, and it's been the most rewarding thing. I did, uh, yeah. I started stand up at 27, and it was a calling. Mm. Like it just like called in my soul, and I didn't want to do it. Osama, I didn't. Wanna, I knew oh, how yeah. I, I knew oh. how hard it was. I yeah. respected it. I was a comedy nerd from the beginning. Right. And uh, you know, I, I watched Saturday Night Live. I know all the stand ups. I could Eddie Murphy. I, I saw all Delirious all day. The first thing that blew my mind. Uh, and I always say this to people was like, the reason I didn't get into it early, I knew how hard it was. And yeah. then I got into it. Guess what? It was 10 times harder than <laughs> I thought. The hardest thing ever. It's the hardest but thing you, ever. You went to med school. You know how hard bro, bro, it is. To, to dissuade people from doing stand up, we need to have release albums that are just like live at the open mic, New York Comedy Club, 5 p.m. Yeah. That's what we need to, because all the kids, as a, as a comedy fan, all we listen to were the. 
theater specials and the specials, and we're like, whoa, comedy's like this. Yeah. No, no, millions of dollars. That. No, no, no. Comedy no. is not a you know, leather jacket walking around doing gay impressions of Mr. T, and everyone's exploding. That's not it. That's not it. It is years of the worst shit on planet Earth. But I loved it. Loved it, and loved nothing it. like rocking a crowd and on, doing baby. jokes. Oh, and good. you can check out, we got to get out of here. Oh, Shapeshifter okay. Lab, shout out to Matt Garrison for being cool. Shout out to Osama Siddiqui for being cool, for coming through. Uh, tell the good people where they can find you on the internet. Uh, at Usama Stands Up, U-S-A-M-A, Stands Up. There's still a lot of stuff there. Follow my podcast, Mango, Mango Bay. My boy Perno, uh, it's a good time. Awesome. All right, that's it. That's the end of the show. Peace Boom. and love, everybody. Always Yoni, do. thank you very much. Always do. All right. Woo! Usama, thank you. Peace. Same ADHD like going to 90 different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. <laughs>